The first contingent, of five sisters, was sent to Nairobi to establish a new foundation. Two Philippine sisters, were designated to work at the Azima dispensary. Construction of the dispensary, began in July, 1982, but had to come to a sudden halt, due to the coup attempt by the Kenyan Air Force, to overthrow the government. The completion dragged longer. But finally, all hurdles were removed, and on June 19, 1983, the dispensary opened doors, and was blessed by His Eminence, Cardinal Morris Orchinga. Sister Amparo, from the Philippine, resumed leadership of the dispensary. Kureti Acheng, I arrived here in, uh, on the 1st of February 1981. I am a Ugandan. We arrived here, two of us, two Ugandan girls. And then the sisters picked us in uh, Akamba bus station and brought us to this house which was very new. They had actually slept only two nights in this house when we joined them. I was so happy when I saw this congregation because it was so balanced. I was looking for a congregation like this because uh, since I was in standard seven, a, a very young girl of 16 years, I al always wanted to be a sister. So I was looking for congregations to join and I had seen several, but this one was really the best. When I arrived here, there were, were three German sisters. One was the, a Nazarene school teacher who was to take over the school. One was in the kitchen and in the garden, Sister Imtrud, and then Sister Chantal was the, the superior of the house. But then there was also uh, two Filipina sisters, so there were five sisters here. Although one was in the, in the language school, I didn't, as, who was supposed to take over the hospital. She was called Sister Ramira. So Ramira was in the language school. So when I arrived, she was not here. So there were four sisters. So when I came, for me, I had never lived with the Europeans or even to be near them. So they tell me their name I couldn't catch. So I was so primitive, green. And so I feared, so I, I was always tensed. The leadership of the dispensary passed baton from the Germans, the Philippines, and the Korean sisters. And eventually, it came time for the African sisters to put on the big girls' boots. Sister Rosa Pascal did a tremendous work in upgrading infrastructure, quality of service, and seeing the dispensary elevate to a level 4 hospital. She was later preceded by Sister Veronica Monti, who is the current administrator. My name is Sister Veronica Monte Casoa. Uh, I'm the director of this uh, facility, which is now St. Scholastica Uzima Hospital. Before it used to be Uzima Dispensary and Maternity. But this year we went to level 4. That's why and we changed to our hospital, from dispensary to hospital. For now, the facility has grown to hospital level and we have grown. The number of uh, staff has grown. Before, we used to be uh, ranging 60s, 60s, but now we are 108. Mm, this number is a combination of different cadres. We have now medical doctors working with us. We have clinical officers, we have nurses, nurse aides, and we have uh, imaging section because we have the ultrasound part. We have dental, we have nutritionists, and we have uh, housekeepers. So we have different um, cadres working together so that we can get this facility to the level that we want it to be in the coming years. For now, we have a bed capacity of 50 beds. In the facility, we have grown. My name is Dr. Henry Jaroge. I am the resident medical officer of Saints Classical Uzima Hospital, Waraka. Here we offer a holistic uh, <coughs> environment. We just don't look at uh, just how we can cure the disease. We look at curing the whole person in whole. That is just not just the physical uh, affirmity, what, what the person has. We look at the spiritual aspect of the disease, 
even the psychological aspects of the disease and at the most probably eh, and it's quite affordable here and the services are excellent you should come interact with the nurses and everyone the clinicians and you'll find out that everyone if you look at our, our social media handles everyone is very happy about our services so most people prefer delivering on Zima because uh, the maternity department is one of the best of performing departments in, even in this in Nairobi County because uh, I can tell you for sure that we, our, maternity, our mothers are very well taken care of that. Uh, in the past, I think, five years, we never had a mortality, a maternal mortality. That also comes the same way with uh, our children. We have a very vibrant child welfare clinics that are run from uh, every Monday, Wednesday and Fridays. My name is Mutua. Uh, I came in 1990. Then uh, I went to college at NYS Secretarial College. I was doing my duties during the day. In the evening, I go to class. Then in 1990, um, I was absorbed at uh, cashier at the reception. So since 1990 up to, to date, I'm still at the reception. When I came in 1990, the facility was a bit small, but we had so many patients. Initially, we couldn't accommodate all the patients per day. So we used to work in shifts, maybe we do 300 per day, then the next day we do the rest. But from the sisters who came later in 1992, they made, uh, they extended the facility a bit. So Maria Co did the upper section, the first floor. Then at least we could accommodate more patients. So we used to serve patients from Survey, Gedurai, Madare, but initially it was supposed to be for Madare people because it's a faith-based hospital. There is unique bond between this community, the, uh, the congregation of uh, St. Scholastica with the community. A bond which I believe it has grown with time. A bond which has really made the community around us build, uh, have trust on us. And uh, that is something which us as the community, I mean us because we having been here for that show, we are part of this community. That's a bond which I believe it is not easily breakable. And um, it's a spirit. Sometimes we used to call it uh, the Usima spirit. The spirit of unity, spirit of being, uh, having empathy and sympathy to a, client and the spirit of having core values and vision which aligns with our community needs. Uh, it's something we usually emphasize every day, every morning when we do our daily prayers. We try to ensure that we nurture even the people who are joining us listen to have that core value, to embrace the core values so that we can be able to uphold that kind of bond with the community. After a long day of fulfilling labor, the sisters return to the convent house, where they reunite with the other sisters in their monastic community. At the Roraka convent stands the oldest foundation stone in the entire Nairobi Priory. The convent was erected in 1980, next to the Benedictine Fathers' vicinity. In attendance, during the launch of the convent, was the Vicaress General from Rome, Mother Adeltrude Waste. Currently, Sister Mary Margaret is the House Superior. I'm Sister Margaret Mary Bithy. I joined the Missionary Benedictine Sisters in the year 1986, and I'm the 10th Superior of the House, I, being the 50th African Superior before we had the foreigners who had come to start the congregation in Kenya. And so they started in this house and later on it spread to elsewhere. My job is mainly to attend the sisters, make sure that the schedule of the community is there, their well-being, their spiritual care, and uh, whatever else comes because we have also many ministries of, we have a school, it's a boarding school, we have a hospital, so every time they come, they, have, they are in need, they need help, and so we sit together and see how we can manage those projects together. So I feel comfortable, even being here new, 
I'm, I'm kind of saying I'm not shaken because I've worked hard from nothing. Here is a different setting because it's already set and it has grown in many ways in, in comparison with Elder H. Kimumu. But all in all, I'm, I'm not feeling afraid. I'm saying the challenges which are there, God will still help me to do so.